Good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking the time out to join us at the second rerun of the very final workshop. Uh, we had our first workshop in June last year. Um, and in the event that you have a question um, for us, you can type in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Or you, if you have a question only after the webinar, you may also email us at fda at fbs.org.sg. The email address is also um, shared in the chat box. So without further ado, let's start the sessions. I shall hand over the floor to Alani, who is the first speaker, and then I'll go by Rahimi. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Alani, and I will begin by sharing the agenda for today with you. So I will start off with an introduction to Singapore, Singapore's network of free trade agreements, and an overview of these FTAs. Then Rahini will take you through the topic of how FTAs increase the price competitiveness of your products. After that, Priscilla will introduce the Tari Finder platform and then give a demonstration on how to register for it and use the platform. So let's begin with the free trade agreements in Singapore. We currently have 27 FTAs uh, or EPAs, which stand for Economic Partnership Agreements, enforced with 65 trading partners. The dark grey areas in this image highlight the markets that Singapore has negotiated trade agreements with. Next slide. Generally, FTAs are categorized into two groups, the first being bilateral FTAs. Bilateral FTAs are agreements that take place between single parties. So these are all the different countries that Singapore has signed bilateral FTAs with. In the case of the EU-Singapore FTA, even though it includes all the 28 EU member states, these states are under a common union, which is considered as one party and hence the EU-SG FTA is taken as a bilateral one. Next slide. The second type of FTA is the regional FTA, which are agreements amongst several parties. Common examples include the ASEAN and ASEAN Plus FTAs, such as the CPTPP. For clarification, ASEAN Plus means ASEAN plus one other country. So for example, ASEAN and China or ASEAN and India. A new and upcoming regional FTA is the RCEP, also known as the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. As of now, it is the world's largest FTA as it comprises about 30% of the global GDP and about a third of the world's population. It has not entered into force yet, but is expected to take off in early 2022. In case you wanna find out more about each individual FTA, you can download the legal text and infographics which break down the information from the ESG FTA web website. Next slide. In this slide, the FTAs are organized such that you have a quick overview of the different FTAs which are relevant to different countries. And you can use this to identify which FTA your business can leverage on. Here we can see that ASEAN actually has signed several FTAs. And for countries such as Brunei, Malaysia and Vietnam, they not only have FTAs with ASEAN Plus, but they have also signed agreements for ma other major FTAs, such as the CPTPP and RCEP. As you can see, we have highlighted some of the FTAs in red. This indicates that the particular country under that FTA, although having signed the FTA, has yet to ratify the agreement. For example, although CPTPP is already in force, we cannot use it to leverage. Uh, we cannot leverage CPTPP to obtain preferential tariffs when sending shipments to these countries as they have not ratified the agreement yet. In such cases, businesses should look for alternative options, such as the ASEAN Plus FTAs instead. Similarly, for RCEP, we can see that only Singapore has ratified the agreement, but RCEP requires at least six ASEAN member states and three ASEAN FTA partners to ratify the FTA before it can enter into force. So how does this vast network of FTAs, which Singapore has signed, help us? By having a variety of FTAs, even with the same country, for example, New Zealand, businesses can compare the preferential tariff rates under different FTAs. They also have the advantage of comparing the rules of origin across various FTAs to see which requirements their products can meet. This provides Singapore companies with options and flexibility, allowing them to choose the most suitable options for their business. Next slide. While there are a number of benefits to using FTAs, I will just briefly introduce the benefits you can get in three main areas. The first being trading in goods. Under this category, Singapore businesses can improve the cost competitiveness of their products in foreign markets. 
This is also a result of an improvement in faster time to market duration. For trading and services, FTAs enable better market access in global markets in the sense that our businesses are given the permission by foreign countries to offer their services and operate overseas, increasing their markets and opportunities. Removal of tariffs also means that the playing field is leveled for Singapore businesses when compared to the foreign country's own domestic suppliers. Lastly, there is also investment protection. FTAs ensure that businesses will not face any threat of nationalization. It also allows for free transfer of invest investments and funds and provides investor state dispute mechanisms. Overall, these three factors, among other benefits, ensure certainty in the trading environment. Now, I will hand over the floor to Ragini to tell you more on how exactly FTAs help to improve the cost competitiveness of your products. Thank you, Alani, for the introduction to future agreements. Hi, everyone. I'm Ragini from the FTA team in Singapore Business Federation. And today I'm going to share more about FTAs and how they can make your products more price competitive. I'll also be sharing about the HS codes and the rules of origin. So how do FTAs help make your products more price competitive? So from this right side of the scale illustration, you can see that these are the costs that the importer incurs when sourcing the product domestically or internationally without any FTAs in place. If the product is sourced from overseas, there may be duties imposed. So these duties are collected by the customs authority in the importing country. As we can refer to the scale, these this excise taxes, sales tax, VAT or GST are imposed for local and foreign produced goods. For customs duties, it's actually only imposed on foreign produced goods. So this is where FTAs come in. They may help to reduce or eliminate these customs duties and allow your product to have a competitive pricing in the local market. Next. So let's take this example of instant noodles exporting from Singapore to Vietnam with a HS code of 1902.30.40. Without any FTAs in place, the MFN rate is at 30%. MFN rate are the tariffs that countries impose on imports from other members of the World Trade Organization. Now, moving on to the ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement, ATIGA, and the ASEAN China Free Trade Agreement, ACFTA, the preferential rate is at 0%. However, for the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans Pacific Partnership, CPTPP, the FTA preferential rate is at 11.3%. The tariff will only be eliminated to zero after five years, which is in 2023. Under the tariff savings, you can see that with ATIGA and ACFTA in place, you can have up to $60,000 of savings. And for CPTPP, you can save $22,600 if you're exporting $200,000 of goods. Next. So there are some steps to fulfill before enjoying tariff savings. First is the rules of origin you need to keep in mind that the product still needs to meet certain rules of origin to enjoy preferential tariffs. So you must check what are the rules of origin of the products you'll be exporting are. ATIGA, ACFTA, and CPTPP all have different rules of origin. For ATIGA, the exporter can choose regional value content, RVC rule of not less than 40%, or change in tariff classification at the six digit level, which is the subheading for non-originating materials. For ACFTA, the exporter can choose the regional value content RVC rule of not less than 40% or change from any other chapter, which is the first two digits. I would actually like to highlight at this point that for some FTAs, there might be a case where you must meet both regional value and change of tariff classification. So it will be good to check beforehand. Uh -huh. Moving on to CPTPP, the exporter must meet change in subheading from 1902 to 1904 from any other chapter. For the exporter to actually enjoy preferential tariff rate, uh -huh. they will also need to export the products with the relevant documents. If you're using ATIGA, it needs to be exported with a form D. And for ACFTA, it needs to be exported with a form E, 
both issued by Singapore Customs. CPTPP follows a self-certification regime. So the exporter will have to self-certify that the product meets the rules of origin. You may check Annex 3B for the information needed to self-certify. So which FTA to be used? It depends on the rules of origins actually. For all three FTA, the member parties are different. So depending on where these materials are sourced out and accumulated, you may use the FTAs that covers those parties. Next. So moving on, I'll be talking about the harmonized system codes or HS codes. To determine preferential treatment and the rules of origin of the product, we need to use the HS code, also known as the harmonized system code. So for FTAs, it's important to identify the correct HS code of your product. HS code was actually developed by the World Custom Organization to classify goods. There are 5,000 commodity groups covered by 99 chapters with 21 sectors. So globally, the HS code is up to the six digit level and within ASEAN is up to the eight digit level. which is also called the ASEAN Harmonized Tariff Nomenclature, AHTN. Next. Let's take this example of a canned pineapple product with the HS code of 2008.20.10. So this product is under chapter 20, which is the first two digits of the code. Then it comes down to the heading 2008, which is the first four digit of the code. Then it's further divided into subheading, the first six digit of the code, which is 2008.20. Under the national heading, it's 2008.20.10, which is the eight digit level. The product will be recognized in ASEAN countries at the eight digit level, but globally, it will be recognized at the six digit level. Next, we'll be moving on to the rules of origin, which is actually a set of criteria that's used to determine the product's originating status. So there are two criteria to determine if the product originates from Singapore, which is wholly obtained and not wholly obtained. If the products are not wholly obtained, they must have undergone substantial or minimal transformation. So if you're exporting goods from Singapore, you actually need to ensure that Singapore is the last country that the products undergo substantial transformation to enjoy originating status. Next. This slide actually shows how the rules of origin are categorized. One is wholly obtained products, another is non wholly obtained products that needs to be substantially transformed to be considered originating. This can be determined by a change in tariff classification, regional value content, or the process rule, which mainly applies to chemical or textile products. So for wholly obtained goods, they are actually obtained or produced entirely within an FTA partner country. Some examples are mineral products extracted from the soil or the seabed, vegetable harvested, and live animals born and raised in the FTA partner country. In Singapore, the more common products for wholly obtained goods are ornamental fishes like arowana and plants like orchid and even aquaculture food fish, even though they are not frequently exported. Last but not least, the waste and scraps that are either collected locally or by products from manufacturing process fit only for recycling. Next, change in tariff classification method. This method is used to determine the rules of origin. For this method, the final product must have undergone substantial transformation such that the raw materials from overseas has undergone a change in HS code at any level. So from the examples below, we can see that after substantial transformation, there has been a change in the HS code of the final product, be it a change in chapter, change in heading, or change in subheading. Next. Let's take this chocolate bar as an example. We are exporting this from Singapore to Vietnam using Atiga with a HS code of 1806.32. The rules of origin is that there needs to be a change of heading from the first four digits. Moving down to the raw materials, we can spot that cocoa butter from Brazil is non-originating 
and olive oil from Italy is non-originating. In this case, do you actually think that the product fulfills the origin criteria? Okay. And yes, it does fulfill the origin criteria. Cause there's a change in the first four digit of the non-originating materials. Therefore, this chocolate bar meets the rules of origin and can be exported from Singapore to Vietnam using Atiga. Next, I'll move on to the regional value content, RVC. For this method, the product's origin is determined by the value of work done in the exporting country, which is the last country of substantial transformation. So there are two methods to determine RVC value of the goods. One is the build-up method, the other is the build-down method. Let's take the chocolate bar again as an example. We are exporting this product from Singapore to Vietnam using Atiga. And the rules of origin is that the RVC content cannot be less than 40%. The FOB value is $1. So using the build-up method, do you think that this product meets the origin criteria? So yes, it actually does meet the origin criteria. As we can see from the formula on the right, we take the price of the originating materials, which is the cocoa powder and the wrapper, plus the direct labor and the direct overhead cost, plus the profit, all divided by the FOB value of the goods, you get 80%. Therefore, this product does meet the rules of origin. For the final method is the process rule. As mentioned previously, this method is usually applicable for chemical or textile products. So there are specific production process such as chemical reaction or transformation. For an example, the product needs to be cut, sewn or knit in a specific way to be considered originating. Lastly, these are some of the questions you can ask yourself before deciding to use FTEs. Firstly, you can check if the importer is paying any import duties and how much are they. Next, is your product actually covered under tariff elimination under a specific FTA? It will be good to check whether it's a reduced tariff or a zero tariff. Next is for the rules of origin. Do they actually meet the rules of origin criteria? If they don't meet the rules of origin criteria, maybe you can look into the supply chain of your material and try to source them to meet the rules of origin. Lastly, what are the tariff savings? So in terms of savings for some company, it may not be very significant to actually use FTEs. And that's the end of my presentation. I will now hand over to Priscilla, who will give you the demo of the tariff finder. Thank you, Alani and Rahimi for sharing on the free trade agreement. So let's move on to how to register and use tariff finder. To access tariff finder, you can visit the FTA website at Enterprise Singapore. The tariff finder link can be found on the left panel of the page. So just click on it, then it will bring you directly to the login page of tariff finder. If not, you can also scan the QR code here which will also bring you to the login page of Terry Finder. So in all, Terry Finder is free of charge. Um, it is also mobile responsive. You can um, access it on your iPad or your handphone. So if you have not created an account on Terry Finder, um, you can just click on uh, register um, at the login page. So and this is how the registration site look like. So two things that you need when you register for an account. Um, you need your corporate email address and your company's UEN number. So Tariff Finder is designed specifically for Singapore-based companies to use, and thus UEN is required to ensure that your company is registered in Singapore. So um, to register your account, all the blues here are mandatory, your name, your email, your password, and you need to input the address of a company as well as the UEN number. And you do not need to share your account with your colleagues, Multiple accounts can be registered under one UEM, so you can, you know, your colleagues can register on their own. Uh, 
um, as I mentioned earlier, Trackfinder only serves Singapore-based companies. So if you are based overseas or you are traveling overseas or if the server of your company is located, located overseas, you may not be able to access Trackfinder. The system can actually recognize the IP address and if it, if it is foreign, your access would likely be blocked. So do contact us at SPF if you face problem with your access. So this is a log, um, the homepage once you have logged in. You notice that there are two logos here, Enterprise Singapore and Mentor. Mentor is a specialized data content provider in the field of global customs and foreign trade managers. Uh, Mentor is also the service provider for this site, Verifinder, and they have also done work for the European Commission's market access database. So what does Serifinder do and why do you use Serifinder? Basically, you can use Serifinder to get information on tariff and non-tariff trade measures. Serifinder covers four main areas. Uh, the first is nomenclatures. So Serifinder can help you check for the most appropriate HS code in the destination countries for your goods. You can also check for the applicable um, tariff and taxes that your shipment may incur at importations. It also includes um, pressure tariff rates uh, for your product. If you would like to use FTA, you can check which FTA you can use for shipments and are you able to fulfill the rules of origin of, of this FTA. So Tariff Finder can provide all this information. Lastly, it also has information on the import procedures and documentations required at importation. So to help you understand how Tariff Finder is, is used, um, we're doing a demo on Tariff Finder and these are the examples that we're going to use. So firstly, we're going to um, check um, the results based on Instant noodles exported from Singapore to China. Assuming that we do not know the HS code, we're going to search by using the nomenclature view. Second example, we'll be shipping exporting chocolate candies from Singapore to India by entering the uh, first four digits of the HS codes into the uh, product code field. Third, we're going to export nets from Singapore to USA by searching um, um, by search by entering the entire HS codes of the product. Fourth example. Um, instead of using Singapore, we're going to use China as a country of origins and we're going to export disposable masks or surgical masks from China to, uh, to Vietnam. And we're going to search by entry masks in the keyword search, assuming that we do not know the HS code of um, the disposable, disposable masks. All right. So let me share the uh, verifier. So this is the login page of Trident Finder. So earlier I've mentioned that if you have not registered an account, you can click on this, register here, and then you'll be to the registration site. Okay, so let me log in. This is the home page once you have logged in. Ah, sorry, give me a minute. I need to log in again. This is the homepage once you have logged in. Um, this, hold on. Okay, so this um, tariff finder covers four, these four areas, normal catchers, tariff and taxes, rules of origins, and import export formalities. This page also shows all the recent updates that Mender has maintained for the site. So this is a good place for you to, for you to check on any latest changes that may be placed for the destination country that your country, that your company always ship to. All right, so. To start using Tariff Finder, you will need this information on hand, the country of origin of your products. So if let's say you're going to input Singapore here, you have to make sure that the goods are actually made in Singapore, destination country, where the goods are exported to, and the product code or interest codes of the product. So let's start with the first example that I have shared earlier. We're going to export um, instant noodles from Singapore to China under the interest code 1902. We're going to search the product using the normal catcher view. So origin, originating country would be Singapore. Destination country, China. 
and then we are going to search for uh, the HS codes of um, instant noodles using the normal capture view. So this is where the community code um, catalog is. The list of products here goes by chapter. So if you go down the list, you find that the products go from live animals to vegetables to manufactured goods such as plastics um, and chemicals and, and machineries. So this normal classroom list is actually structured by WCO, which is the World Custom Organizations. There are around 5,000 commodity groups, and the list is refreshed every five years as new products enter the market. So let's just start searching for instant noodles. So or we go down the list and eliminate the products that is, um, we eliminate the product accordingly. So it's not live animals, it's not vegetables animals, it's not animal vegetable fats, it could be prepared food stuff, it's not mineral products, and because all here is all manufactured items like chemicals and plastics, we should not go down the list. So let's try this one. And we go down the list again. It's not preparations of meats, not sugar, not cocoa. It could be preparation of cereals or flour. It's not preparation of vegetables and beverages. And we click on this. So again, we go down the list. It's not malt extracts, not pasta. It could be pasta. It's not tapioca. It's not prepared food. Okay, by swelling or roasting of cereals. It's not great. Then we click here. It's not cooked pasta. It's not stuffed pasta. It could be under other pastas. And we click further and we find instant noodles, all right? So we click on it. So this is the national uh, product code of instant noodles and to China, okay? And the results of your search can be found here. Instant noodles exported from Singapore to China under this HS code, the MFN rate is 10%. So MFN stands for most favored nations. Um, any country that is a WTO member country would enjoy the same tariff rates so 10% is the tariff duties that China imposed to other WTO members for Eastern noodles. So the countries listed here are the countries that China has signed an FDA or have certain trade agreement with. So under China, Singapore, FDA, tariff rates will be reduced to zero, which is free. And if you're using ASEAN China FDA, the tariff, tariff rates will be um, zero as well. Singapore being part of ASEAN means that Singapore exporters can also use this FDA to enjoy the preferential rate. If you click further, you find this additional duty USA. So due to US-China trade war, instant noodles from USA would have an additional duty of 10%, I'm sorry, 5%. Plus, if you are a US firm producing instant noodles, um, you will need to pay 10% because US is a WTO member country, and plus 5%, which is a total of 15% of import duties into China. And the rest of the countries, um, Tariff rates for the rest of countries are listed as follow if you are interested to find out more. So let's go further. Tax and charges. FDA does not eliminate tax and charges. So the importers in China will need to pay 30% of the duty paid value for instant noodles exported from Singapore. Next is the rules of origin. As we are exporting from Singapore, only uh, uh, rules of origin from the relevant FDA will be reflected here. So earlier we have um, seen that it's ASEAN China FDA and China Singapore FDA. Under um, ASEAN China FDA, the rules of origins are regional value content of not less than 40% or a change from any other chapters. So this is a all rule, meaning the only the company only has to meet one of the criteria to fulfill the fulfillment. The same goes for China Singapore FDA, but by only one of the two criteria needs to be fulfilled. So what's interesting here is that the criteria for both FDAs are different. If the company is unable to meet the RBC um, or change from any other chapters under ACFDA, they can check if their goods can actually meet the criteria under CSFDA instead. So vice versa, if they cannot meet the criteria of CSFDA, they can review the criteria under ACFDA for their products. So with two different sets of criteria um, from these two FDA, the company has the facility of using one that they can fulfill. All right, so next up is the uh, import formalities. You notice that the HS code here only states 1902. So this means that information listed here could um, not be product specific, but more of high level uh, information on this category of the product. This is a good place for you to check for general information, um, such as import declarations and packing and review. Um, 
because it is high level, it is suggested to clarify with your importance for more in-depth understandings of each requirement. All right. Uh, uh, one interesting thing to note is this specific requirements that are stated here. They have this registration of foreign exporters of particular foodstuff and registrations of importance of foodstuff and cosmetics. I think this um, information is actually important for exporters, although it's high level information again, such as um, such as um, information like processing time, um, that, um, the, the document um, name is in Chinese, and then it has to be submitted with, um, electronically via the registration systems. So um, all this information can be useful information for first time exporters into China. If you scroll down further, it will also show you a sample of the um, a screenshot of how the registration sites look like. All right. So this is that's all for the first example. Let's move on to the second one. The second example that we're going to work on is um, shipping, importing chocolate candies from Singapore to India. And then we're going to search by entering the first four digits of the HS code, which is 1806. So destination country, we're going to change to India here. And it's 1806. So we're going to search for the most appropriate HS codes for the chocolate candies. And we go down the list um, as usual. Um, it's not cocoa powder or it's not preparations in blocks. And then we can find that it's chocolate and chocolate products here and with the clock. Um, this would be the most appropriate chess code for this product. And we're going to click, click on it. Okay, so this is the result. Um, from shipping chocolate candies from Singapore to India under 18069010. And the MFN rate is actually 30%. So what the results here show is only the MFN rate and nothing else. Um, there's no country listed here. Um, there's no preferential, preferential rate available. So what does this mean? So this actually means that this particular product or this HS code has not been negotiated under any, under any of the FTA that you know, India has signed with Singapore or any other country. Thus, um, no FTA can be used and all chocolate candies imported in India would be imposed with 30% import duties. So even though um, FDA is not available, we can still have a look at the rest of the details. Both tax and charges still apply. And um, even though we don't use FDA, right, for these bigger products, I still want to um, talk about the rules of origin here. So if one day this product is added to the negotiated list and FDA can be used, the uh, rules of origin for AI FDA, ASEAN India FDA, could be as follow. Wholly obtained, wholly produced or obtained a party or a AI FDA content is not less than 35% of the FOP value. This actually is an RBC requirements. And the non-originating materials have undergone at least a change in tariff subheadings. That means um, goods have to meet both the RBC criteria and the change in tariff classification criteria. So in the previous example of the instant rules, uh, the requirement is to meet either one of the two criteria. For shipments to India or for goods exporting, exporting into India, the requirements will be more stringent as it is required to meet both rules here. Right? So, there are also, okay, um, as usual, high level information on the import formalities for 1806. And then there are also um, strict imports um, procedures for food products into, tariff, um, into India. So tariff finder has provided high level information on licenses and document required um, to import and sell food stuff into India. As usual, information like um, processing time, processing fees, things, things like that. And then it also shows you how application form looks like. So give you a, so this gives you a head start in case your importers need certain information that they need to get from the um, exporters. Okay. So let's move on to the next example. And this time we're going to export a bassinet from Singapore to US. And we're going to search by entering the entire HS code. So Singapore to the United States. America. The HS code is 9403. 
or three. For shipping from Singapore to US, this particular product, the MFN rate is free. So good news here, um, FDA is not required. There's no um, duties um, debit on this particular product. And then um, let's click further. You'll find these two again. I'll find these things again, additional duty on China. Because of um, US-China trade war, 25% of SOB um, import duties, F rates will be imposed on vaccinates made in China that is exported and is imported into USA. Okay. And then what is this general tariff rate? So these are the rates for other countries that do not enjoy preferential or most favored nation tariff treatment. So countries like Cuba and North Korea, uh, which is under this list, will need to pay um, a duties of 40% of our FOB uh, price. So next is the tax and charges. Still taxes still, is still applicable. And I would like to bring your attention to this merchandising processing fee. So this fee is levied at the importer's end. However, if you read here, the fees can be exempted if um, a US-Singapore trade agreement is available. So even though the MFN here is already 0%, FCA is not required. But if let's say this MPF fee is quite a substantial amount, importers in US may request for US-Singapore FDS from Singapore exporters to avoid paying this fee. Okay, so if let's say US as FDA is required, then the rules of origins is applicable. And this is um, the rules of origins criteria for using this FDA. As usual, imports for um, procedures um, information is available as well. Uh, interesting things here under the specific requirements, there's this import license for wildlife, import permit for protected plants and products thereafter, and so on. So let's just click one to have a look. Import license for wildlife is actually required for vaccinate import, imported into USA. So if the vaccinate is contains products of endangered animals or plants, then the importers would need to apply for an import license. Okay. So Singapore manufacturers who usually import raw materials from overseas, right? You may need to check if your raw materials contains uh, products of any indigenous animals or plants. Okay, so instead of companies going to the website to search for information on specific requirements for their goods, can, can use Tariff Finder as a head start to check on such requirements to avoid any non compliance. Okay, all right, so let's move on to the last example. This time we're going to try something different. We're going to export disposable medical masks or surgical masks from China to Thailand. So we're going to input China here. Assuming that we do not know the HS code of the surgical mask, we just enter the keyword mask and search for it. So um, so what listed the result listed here are the products that are related to mask, and we just go down the list and eliminate the products accordingly. So the, for the first one, um, giving appliances and gas masks. So this is out. These are parts and accessories, including printed circuit assemblies of optical instruments. So it's out. And we can find surgical masks here. So we just, this is what we want, and we just click on it. So this is the national um, HS code surgical mask into China, and sorry, into Thailand. So the MFA rate for this product is 10%. So China can use China FDA to enjoy zero tariff rate. Okay. So under the ROO, the rules of origin, exporters need to ensure that it fulfill either the regional value content or the process rule. So if you remember earlier, process rule usually applies to textile products or anything that's to do with chemical change. So for this product, it means that it has been, it has to be manufactured through the processes of cutting and assembling of parts into a complete article and incorporating embroidery on or embellishments or printings from raw or finished fabrics or finished fabrics. Okay. 
and we go down further, imports for varieties again, and specific requirements, import license for medical devices. So there are some information here that shares on the import license for medical device as required for custom clearance. As usual, the information here is high level, but it does provide essential information so that the importers know what to expect or what to do. As usual, um, they have information on the processing time, the processing fees, and they even tell you that application form needs to be completed in time. So um, all the information can actually help to um, help the manufacturers to plan the production and shipments, and also to know what kind of uh, documents uh, that's required um, to provide to the body customs. All right. So that's all for the examples demo. And before I go, before I end this, I'd like to share on one feature of um, the website, the Serif Finder, that's this report here. So this report actually allows you to export your findings into PDF and then store under um, your account. So for example, I have this example, China to Thailand, this particular, particular routes. So I just need to search, churn out the result, and then I just click Save report. Okay, then I click on the reports here. You see that it has been shared. So you can follow them or you can dispose them later if you do not want to, if you do not want them. So you can just download your results here. And this is um, the result in PDF format for easy reference. All right. So um, I've come to the end of my demo. So let's go into Q&A now. There's one particular um, question that asks if my shipment is discharged in USA but truck over to Canada, should I put USA or Canada as destination country? Okay, so it depends on where your goods will be. Um, it depends on the final destinations of your goods. If let's say Canada is the last country that going to import the goods into and Canada to be the um, destination country that you're going to import into um, Air Finder. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw another question. Okay, we'll be sharing, sending the video recording Later, um, as well as the slides to um, the participants at a later date. We are, we are going to launch the feedback right now, and then we appreciate everyone to input the feedback. For this webinar. Sorry, I found that there are a lot more questions here. Uh, I also forgot to say that uh, we are thankful to have a colleague from Enterprise Singapore who are here with us who will try the QA. Okay, so one of the, let me start with another question. It says, can my colleague and I sign up for Terrifier workshops if we have the same UN number? Yes, of course. You can sign up for the Terrifier 
Terry Finder workshop. It has nothing to do with um, the accounts that you created under Terry Finder. And non Singapore businesses sign up for Terry Finder, uh, unfortunately, no. We will, um, this Terry Finder is only available for Singapore registered businesses. How regular is the information in Terry Finder updated? So vendor will always keep a lookout of um, happenings um, in, in tariff and non-tariff trade measures, and then they will um, update accordingly. You can always check the tariff finder homepage to get um, data information on, um, on the latest developments in tariff measures and non-tariff measures. Can I create an account with a Gmail or Hotmail instead of company email? Mm. I think you can, but it is recommended to create an account using your corporate email address. Can I use Terry Finder for non FTA destinations? Yes, you you can if, because you you are going to enter. Um, the destination based on the, the, the countries, right? So if let's say you enter, I don't know, maybe Africa, it should have information on that as well. Sorry, is there a question asking, is there a summary list of RBC percentage for all the 27 agreements? Um, I'm not very sure about that. Can the Enterprise Singapore colleagues reply this question? Hi, Trisha here from ESG. Um, so the question is, is there a summary list of uh, the regional value content percentage for all 27 agreements? Um, the answer is no, because all the agreements have different uh, rules. And I mean, that's probably why you're asking. But um, for rules of origin, uh, some FTAs actually are product specific for the rules. So um, in that case, we don't actually have uh, a summary that way. However, Singapore Customs has a handbook of... Uh, on preferential origin, where they summarize the rules um, in short in within a table for the key agreements, especially for the ASEAN ones. So if you Google handbook uh, of, for preferential certificate of origin by Singapore Customs, you will find a table within um, that shows the, a summary of the key rules of origin for the main ASEAN FTAs. But for 27 agreements, we don't have them. Uh, at this moment. However, using the tariff finder should simplify this process as well because when you search, right, you can actually see the rules of origin within as well. Thanks. Thank you, Trisha. I see that there's no more questions. If let's say um, there's any unanswered questions, um, we'll follow up with emails later. And then if you have any more questions that you want to ask us um, after the webinar, you can email to us at fda at sbf.org.sg. So thank you very much for attendance and I will see you again in our uh, other webinars. Thanks.